Hello, this is April with Craft Knife Chronicles and I'm here to share my latest project with you. I'm calling it the Acorn Fairy House. I made this project using Graphic 45's Once Upon a Springtime paper collection. The central feature I think you can see is an acorn for the little fairies to live in. It stands about eight or nine inches tall. There's a base and then the cap that has all the little pink petals on it. And actually that cap can pull off and a mini book or a album can be stored inside. The outside of the landscape has a little picket fence around it that I made from popsicle sticks that I cut in half and then punched holes with a crop -a just to add some extra interest at the top. I used a grass dye to make grass to go around the edge of the fence. There's a little path that leads up to the steps to enter the fairy house and I think you can see on the front edge the little cobblestones. I used Tim Holtz's cobblestone die to create those cobblestones and when we get in closer you'll see that those cobblestones also line both sides of the pathway. The pathway itself is just made up of little tiles that I uh, used lightweight chipboard and then covered with some of the pattern paper from the paper line. To the left of the pathway you can see a mushroom and from the mushroom with the blue cap there hangs a little lantern. That's one of the Tim Holtz mini lanterns and it lights up the path to the fairy house. The battery pack is all actually stored within the stem of the mushroom. Behind the mushroom there's a leaf on a tall stem and I think you can see a little swing that hangs from that leaf so the fairies have a place to play. On the top of that leaf there's a little butterfly and some flowers. Then on the right side we have a taller leaf stem which has actually two leaves on it, two large leaves I should say, and then a bunch of smaller leaves that I cut from medium weight chipboard using one of Tim Holtz tattered leaves dies to make a spiral staircase that goes from the ground up through both of the leaves. And then on each of those platforms is a Adirondack chair and a little t either a little table or on the top one there's actually a little umbrella that goes with that chair. The house has window boxes on the front windows and as we turn it around you'll see that there's also a back balcony. So now I'll turn the project around and we can take a look at some of these features and after that we'll zoom in for a closer look. I love how the little swing swings any time the project is, is touched in any way. Here you can see one of the flower boxes for the front windows and then some more greenery that grows up the side of the house. Up, also up on the top leaf you can get a good view of the Adirondack chair and umbrella. And coming into view on the left is the balcony for the back door. Here's the back view of the house. You can see the back door, a couple of additional little windows, and a little balcony.
Then here on the lower leaf, you can see a table in the front with a little mini Adiron Adirondack chair. And then on the top, a better view of a larger Adirondack chair, umbrella, and an additional table. And here you can see the small leaves spiraling up to make the staircase. And now we're back at the front again. So I'll change the camera angle and we can zoom in for a closer look. Now that I've zoomed in a little closer, you get a better view of the front door and the little sign above the doors that says Fairy Suite. Also you can see that the lantern is lit on the mushroom lamppost. And the little swing is still swinging on the left. Let's see what we can see when we turn it around here a little bit. I think you can see here that the, all of the windows have lights on in them. I don't know if you can see inside. It's a little tricky to show that in this camera view. But there are fairy pictures, pictures of the fairies on, on the side of the box. It's in the interior so that if you get close to the windows, you can peek in and actually see the fairies. I should say that all of the little flowers that you see I made with Tim Holtz Tiny Tattered Flowers Die. That's the one that you use a quilling tool to make little flowers with. There's a real good view of the tiny Adirondack, I'm having a hard time saying that word, Adirondack chair and a little flower table. I also made kind of little mats to give uh, some grounding to each of those vignettes with either a Sizzix or a Tim Holtz floral die. Then we'll come around back here to the front again. The little flower pots on the front steps I actually made with some lightweight chipboard just rolled into a tube, added an even smaller piece of lightweight chipboard around the top to make the flower pots. Um, you can also buy little wooden flower pots. I didn't happen to have any with me. So I just made do with some of my chipboard, painted them white, and used some of the tiniest flowers from that same tiny tattered florals dye to decorate the flower pots. All of the doors have little heart-shaped windows on them. Can't actually see inside of them because I'll take the lid off and then you can see where the box goes uh, so that you can get access to the mini album. Now here you can see the box that the future mini album will go inside and then on either side of that box are two little lids with holes cut out. That allows um, me to pull them up and access the tiny little LED tea lights that light up the windows inside. I 
I think we can zoom in one more time and take a closer look at some of the little vignettes that there are. Here we have a close-up of the butterfly that's sitting on top of the left leaf. And I made this just with a little butterfly die that I cut out twice. And then I made some of the colored plastic with alcohol inks and sandwiched that in between the two die cuts. And that gives the butterfly a real translucent, translucent quality about it. Now we come in for a close-up of the larger of the two Adirondack chairs, and which has an umbrella and a little table. The Adirondack chairs, they're made out of popsicle sticks, and I got the plans from kyleswoodworking.com, and I just adjusted the sizes so that I could make mini versions of the version that is on that website. And I'll include that link in the description below. And here's a close-up of the second Adirondack chair. This one is actually a lot tinier. And I just made this one first and decided I wanted to have a slightly bigger one. But, but I thought this one could still be used in the project. Now we're with a close-up of the front door area and the window and window box. I think you can see how cute those little flowers make up from that Tim Holtz tiny florals die. They were actually pretty simple to make. I was surprised and uh, I made uh, quite a few for th of them for this project. Now here we are looking at a close-up of the left side of the house. The little swing was made from one of the chipboard pieces from the paper line. I just punched several holes in there and added some tiny eyelets and some chain to make the swing. And you can catch a, another look at a tea light glimmering in the window there. Also towards the right you get a v good view of how I use that cobblestone die on the sides of the path and the little tiles that I created to make the actual path uh, leading up to the acorn house. So that's a tour of the acorn fairy house. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this project and if you're interested in seeing how this project came together or even making one for yourself I will be posting the videos that I made during the construction as well as a cutting guide so that you could make the project yourself. This is April with Craft Knife Chronicles. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.